This is A game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, Femininity Coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So I got a good one for you today. It's a video that's been going around with a young lady talking about um, something that a friend told her about how she basically got out of what looked like it was going to be a good relationship. And then she had a little bit of commentary behind that or what she thought about that whole situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I am going to let you guys listen to that. And then we're going to come back and cook. Here we go. You know what? I see why the fellas is mad at us. We can used to do better. So I was talking to one of my homegirls not too long ago. And she tells me she's met the perfect guy, right? She's like, he's great. He's handsome. Um, great job. All of that, right? Oh, nobody's perfect, of course. But standard-wise, preference-wise, he met everything. So then later on, she tells me, and she's like, oh, I dubbed him. You know, he's just not right for me. And I'm like, well, what happened? Like, everything was good. Like, you were saying, like, this could have been future hubby. Like, it, like you was damn near on the right track for everything. Like, he was just matching up. You know what this woman tells me? She says, his car is old. And I say... Okay, what, what does that mean? That What does that mean? She's like, well, he's been in his career for 10 plus years. He should have a brand new car. He should have something from this year. Like, why don't you have a more expensive car? Sis, sounds like he doesn't have a car payment. Sounds like he doesn't have... um an uh, extra seven, eight hundred dollars that he has to spend a month or how much ever a car payment is. It sounds like he's saving up money. What's the problem? Does it work? Does it have an auxiliary cord? Does it have heat and air conditioning? That's all I really care about. Do the windows go up and down? Has it passed inspection? That's really all that counts. But you're worried about it being an old car? Really? You're going to pass him up because his car is old? Just little shit like that that explains why these men are sick of us. Because you could have a perfectly good guy with a good career. He takes care of himself. You know what I'm saying? Like... I Everything that you could ask for, and it's just it's just not enough. But it's women like me that will love on y'all. I just want to let you know that. Okay? We are out here. Stop paying attention to the materialistic women. That's the only thing I can say to you, man. Now, I had to let you guys hear that whole clip because she had the same reaction i did like her kids car was old. okay number one shout out to the no car payment gang okay no car payment no car no gang gang all right i'm gonna need a quick shout out to the no car payment gang all right that's number one number two we've got these chicken heads out here that will leave or sabotage a healthy relationship relationship or if it look like it's gonna promise to be a healthy relationship she go right into chaos mode she go right into saboteur 
mode with these relationships and with these men. Saying that his car was old had didn't have anything to do with anything. She knew what car he had when she met him. It's obviously an excuse, but it's an excuse that gives a little bit of insight to where her mindset is. And we're going to come back to that reasoning and that mindset, right? Because she realized that he had a, a good income, good employment. He basically checked all of these boxes that she was looking for in a man, right? But the problem is the fantasy of that man and the reality of that man are two different things. Every woman thinks that she wants this man that's a leader that's got this going on and he checked this box and he do this and he do that. He got all the four P's and he give them to you like this. And he got leadership. You got system on structure until you get in front of that man. Then you realize it's not a game. When you get in front of that kind of man, it is not a game. He's not playing. Okay. And you're the one that's going to have to realize and understand how to step up or step back. Okay. You're going to have to either shape up or ship out. One of the two. Okay. Because what you're not going to be able to do is stand in his face and play in his face. That's what you're not going to be able to do. And that's actually a problem. See, good men and healthy relationships are problematic to hyenas. And it's not due to all of these different things that they swear up and down are the problem with these men in these relationships. It's not that he doesn't meet the standard. He does meet the standard. He, he meets the boxes that she said he needs to check, right? It's not because he's not a good guy. She knows he's a good guy. And when I say good guy, I'm not talking lame. I'm talking a leader. I'm not talking the good guy that she thinks is she can run over. I'm talking about good man as in an upstanding, a man that's masculine and know what his place and what his role and what his purpose is in his life. And he is got tunnel vision with that. He don't have time to be playing and all of this other type of foolishness, right? That's what I'm talking about. What they call a man's man or, you know, or whatever, a real man and all of that. That's what I'm talking about. So it's not that he's not that guy. It's not that he doesn't have a, a sufficient amount of masculinity. He's overwhelming with his masculinity. As a matter of fact, that is, he's so masculine. That was the attraction. OK, and it wasn't just a sexual lustful attraction to him physically. It was a track. It was an attraction to him energetically. Right. His masculinity was on point. His four P's were on point. His provision and his masculine light and all this type of stuff was on point. His ability to problem solve was on point. His ability to protect on point. His ability to procreate on point. All of this stuff, top tier, top notch. Top-notch masculinity. You can already see by the way that he runs his life that he runs his life based on systems, order, and structures, okay? So he's not a man that's out here just haphazardly doing whatever, flying by the seat of his pants in his life, okay? This is what a hyena will sit up and tell you that she wants. She'll tell you that she wants the alpha lion of the pride. But every time she get in front of that alpha lion, she act a fool. And then he got to skibbity pap it up and tell her to go because she's not ready. And she'll never be ready. And there's an issue that presents itself because it's more than wanting a pookie or a raver. See, it's, it's beyond... All of them other things. And it's not that those other observations are incorrect. It's just that there's always another layer. There's always a deeper root. There's always somewhere else we can go with it. Right? Checking all the boxes. Let's rewind into what checking all the boxes actually means. See, what checking the boxes means is that here we have a man who is living his life according to the 10 life value system. He's got a decent, positive value system 
that he lives his life by. He also intends to run this relationship, excuse me, according to that value system that he has, that he's already implemented in his life. And anybody that comes into his life is going to have to adhere to that value system because he's not going to be compromised in it or abandon it for someone else. You either are going to conform or you're going to go. Because the value system is set already. He is already focused on his purpose. He is already achieving certain levels of success in his life. Okay. So what this means when you have a man that is running his life according to a good positive value system, a 10 life value system, and then he's going to run his romantic relationship according to that value system, it presents a few issues. Issues that the hyenas get confronted by are these, that she can't run the relationship and she can't run him. This is a problem. This is a red flag for her. And she'll turn it around and say, it's his red flag that he can't be controlled. And she'll flip it around and say, he's controlling. No, no, no. You just can't control him. See, what he's not allowing is for you to come in and start dictating everything. What he's not allowing is for you to come in and introduce these, these chaotic things into his life and mess him up. OK, that's what I mean by you can't come in. You can't dictate the relationship. Well, it's going to run like this instead of like this. It's going to run according to what I think it should rather than the established way in which you run your life. Just and this, you know, she won't be able to manipulate things to run according to her chaos. OK. She realizes that she's going to have to come out of the lost value system to be with him and she can't and won't. Now we can come back to the car note situation because what that's really telling us, he should have a new car. He should be, so she's wasteful. See, she's living, she doesn't understand that man's value system. She's so caught in the lost value system where wealth and leisure are at the top. She doesn't understand why he's not putting it at the top. He's supposed to have a brand new car. For what? A brand new car to do what? So you can ride around in it? So you can try to flex and floss in a car that you don't own and a car that he don't own? And it really goes to show where these females' minds are at. Just be wasteful in this man's life. He should be wasteful. Because I know if he's wasteful, he'll allow me to be wasteful right along with him. I'll be able to run through his pockets and waste his money and waste his time and present a tremendous amount of trouble and threat in his life simultaneously. If I know and if I can see that he lives and runs his life according to the chaos of the lost value system, I know I can get here and show my behind with him. And that's exactly what I want to do. See, she left. That was a red flag for her. See, what that demonstrated to her was that he did not hold any value to, I got to have a, a 22, a year 22, year 23, such and such, so-and-so car, okay? Because he understands this is how you get rid of wealth, not accumulate it. Why would I give a monthly payment to a financing company when I got a car that's already paid off? Now the car doesn't have to be a severe financial liability to me. I can utilize it. I don't owe nobody for it. I got the title to it. Okay? It run. And that's that is what it is. I'm not going to be wasteful with my money. I got other things to do with my money than give it away to credit companies and financing companies and all of this other type of stuff when I could be making my money work for me. 
Sounds like she had a man that was intent on building. Okay, in the correct fashion. He wasn't consumed with drip. He wasn't consumed with I got to have the freshest this and that. No, actually, I don't. Car is up to date enough. You know, I'm not riding around here on, in a 1989 box Chevy. You know, I'm good. And I can attest to that. I don't have the newest car. But why, but why should I have it? The car that I have runs perfectly fine. It runs just as well as the day I got it. All you got to do is keep up maintenance on it. That's all you have to do. Ride it till the wheels fall off. Literally. Then you go get you another one. Because it's a debt. It's a debt. Unless you go pay cash for it right off the showroom floor, it's a debt. It loses its value when you drive it off the lot. Like nobody with any sense actually spends their time and their money trying to get these new gadgets and gadgets and things to try to prove to somebody else that they got money. No, that's not even how that's not even how that works. That is not how that works. And you can tell when a person is in that lost value system state because they think that's how money works. She just want to be a consumer. She want him to be one. And he proved that he wasn't. Just by that, proved he wasn't. So what she realizes is that I'm not going to be able to get away with foolishness with this man. I'm not going to be able to introduce all of this chaos and he go for it. He's not going to go for it. I'm going to have to shape up or ship out, right? So in order to get out of these, these relationships, she makes it his problem. Instead of saying, I don't have what it takes to be with that man, they'll never admit that in a million years. So they make it his fault. They make it black men's fault that they can't hang in the good relationship, that they can't hang with a man of value, that they can't hang with a man that has a, a decent and positive and good 10 life value system. They can't hang with that man. They can't deal with him. The fantasy of him is one thing. The reality of him is another. Black men can and should, I understand passport bros completely. Whether you actually leave the country or you simply leave these hyenas alone. I understand that completely because black men cannot take black women seriously with this type of foolishness. The standards is a gaslight. It's all a smoke screen to cover the fact that she's unable to deal in a healthy relationship where she actually has to improve and do things to be worthy in that relationship. And once she come to the understanding that I'm not going to be able to, she doesn't even, she doesn't even try. She doesn't even try to improve herself. She doesn't even try to come to a good value system. She doesn't even try to leave the lost value system. She want to be in that foolishness. And she don't want no man that has the potential to take her out of it because he's not existing and living in it. And that's the issue. That's actually the issue. That is the red flag. The fact that he's not in the lost value system and reveling in it like she is. At some point in time, he found his way out of it or what have you. And he's living, he's literally living his best life. And she wished she could go with him, but she knows she don't got what it takes. And the saddest part is she doesn't even make an, a, an honest attempt to do so. She knows she ain't going nowhere. She knows she got dirty, filthy back feet and she's not going to clean them. She know. She actually did whoever that man is. She did him a favor. And I want you to do me a favor by going to crimsoncure.com to pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine the Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery. So you can go right on to crimsoncure.com and pick up your copy of the book. It is also now available in its uh, digital format on amazon.com. So all you have to do is go to amazon.com and get the digital copy of the book if you so wish to do that. And I'm so happy to be able to announce that and present that to everyone. 
So go ahead and go into the description box and click the link for crimsoncure.com in order to get your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine. Also, you want to go into the description box and hit the link for the petition we have against Black Lives Matter organization because we are holding them accountable for their more than $100 million theft in donated funds. So if you want to become part of holding Black Lives Matter accountable, please go into the description box. We are headed towards our next milestone of 15,000 subscribers. And I thank you in advance for going into the description box, hitting the link for the petition, signing, sharing, and contribute to it. Also, jump down in the comment section and let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonite. Pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine, The Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery from Kendra Davis. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.